McGuire's welcomes you to the car craziest half hour on television. Traveling the world to prove that all car guys are the same. Regardless of where we live on the planet or what type of cars we love, the passion is the same. We're all just totally car crazy. It's about the hood. Welcome to Car Crazy Central, ground zero for monitoring the major events and personalities of the car hobby around the world. Each week, we creatively serve up a full menu of car crazy passion for you to enjoy via our car crazy television and radio shows, as well as on demand through our website, carcrazycentral.com. Our mission is pure and simple. <laughs> oh, that's right. We want to make you... Just a little more. 60% of sports cars today are uh, chosen and driven by women. If the wife uh, or the girlfriend doesn't like the, the sports car, <laughs> you will never buy it. What's it done for your relationship, father and son? Oh, we're very close. I mean, as far as fathers and son go, we're, we're very close. I mean, uh, sometimes when we're working on the cars, we're, we're uh, almost more like uh, brothers than father and son. You sell a dream to people. Life is better when you buy and you ride in a beautiful car, you see things in a more positive way. And now your host, Barry McGuire. Located just outside Milano, Italy, you'll find the exotic car design firm of Zagato, held in awe by the car hobby the world over for creating some of the most magnificent car designs of all time. It all began right after World War I when Zagato founder Hugo Zagato started out designing racing and sports cars for car makers from Alfa Romeo to Volvo and revolutionized automotive design by infusing his cars with lightweight aerodynamics. You know how I love family businesses, especially third generation family businesses. So there's an extra reason why I have so much respect to Hugo Zagato's grandson, Andrea, and his wife, Morella Revolta Zagato, who represent the third generation of Zagato and creating amazing designs because they are undeniably, certifiably car crazy. Hi everybody and welcome to another in a continuing series of Car Crazy Specials coming to you from Italy covering the great design houses and the car manufacturers are here they call them car constructors. And a very special treat today because we're here with Andrea Zagato who owns the great house of design of Zagato at uh, all the car manufacturers you work with throughout all the years. And the, the company is so very famous, but not often do we get to see your face in America. So hopefully we can help our, our, our folks understand how very special this place really is through your eyes. Thank you, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to your earliest recollections of cars, of as, cars as a and child and the, what the beginning of your your whole understanding and emotions. Of my remembering was about my, my grandfather that used to uh, bring me to the school every morning. He would come back, uh, to my house, pick me up, and bring me to school uh, with his uh, car. And uh, I, was, I was eight years old, five and eight years old. Great. And this is the memory I have of my grandfather, Ugo. Ugo. Okay. And then uh, when I started coming to the company, I was uh, very, very young and I used to come here. And uh, I used to drive a uh, forklifter. There was fork I was not allowed to drive a car, of course. I was 10 years old. So I used to go around driving forklifter for the company, I remember. And, uh, and my father was complaining about that, but everybody was <laughs> helping me. Then your dad came along, Elio. Yep. And uh, was born into this business. Go back to, to, to a little bit on the progression here. My, my father was a pilot, a Gran Turismo pilot. He, he, he won uh, most of the race he participates. Uh, not, not only because he was a good good uh, pilot, also because he has a Zagato car to drive, you know. <laughs> and his contribution uh, to the, the company was uh, to define uh, the philosophy of the company that was a minimalist. When you have to build a racing car, you have to be focused on the fact that the car should win the race. So you don't add uh, weight, you don't add uh, parts on the car, you try to have a very simple car. And, and this is, became uh, the philosophy of the company. When we come back, we'll see more of the fascinating things happening at this legendary Italian design house. So don't go away. It's all right here on Car Crazy. Car Crazy. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy, coming to you from the legendary Zagato Design Studios just outside of Milan, Italy. 
but let's go back to those to the past. early days with, with Alpha in particular and, and, the, and the grand cars that were built during that pre-war, pre-World War II period. Yeah, that, that period was my grandfather, Hugo. Yes. He has a good friendship with uh, Vittorio Iano. Vittorio Iano was an engineer, was very famous in Alfa yes. Romeo, was yes. the one who yes. did the, the most famous uh, Alfa Romeo cars, the P2, the 1750, the 1500. So then World War II broke out. Yeah. You're having such good years and World War II broke out and then of course the, 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 the entire area around Milan yeah, was no, bombed was. very heavily and you, and you lost your plan. Yeah, that, that was bombing by the, the, by the English, uh, by the RAF yes, and, the and, and we lost the company and we lost the archive. We lost everything and, and we are rebuilding today the archive, discovering cars of Zagato that my grandfather did that we didn't know. For example, in, in, the, in, the, in the last five years we discovered a Bugatti Zagato that was done uh, together by Ettore Bugatti and my grandfather. I didn't know about it. Uh, we, we discover a um, Maserati 16 cylinder. And it's a, it's a good surprise when you find a car like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. What cars in your mind particularly stand out? The, w w the collaboration, the most important collaboration with uh, Zagato were Alfa Romeo Lancia, uh, Aston Martin, uh, Abarth. So I should pick up one for oh, each uh, collaboration. Yeah. Uh, Aston Martin y yes, should right. be the DB4. Or because it really changed, it brought Aston Martin back to life. And the good thing is, to, is still today the car is uh, represent the actual uh, uh, family feeling of Aston Martin. They pick up the family feeling of the actual uh, DB9 and DB7 uh, from that car. You know when you think of Zagato you so quickly go to the double bubble <laughs> design which is a trademark for it. It's a kind of, uh, the reason of double bubble is, is reinforced the center uh, section of the roof so what is taking place here? This is a busy house. You have, what, 25 designers? Yeah, 25 designers. There is a um, modelist, CAD modelist. There is engineers, a uh, big group of engineers for feasibility, a uh, big group of modelists, and then a complete department that uh, take care about the manufacturing of prototypes. We have to understand that Italy was done by a lot of different regions. Inside Italy, you can find a lot of different approach. Milano and the East, uh, uh, part of Italy was under the Austrian for many, many times, so the mentality is very near to Germans. While um, Piemonte, where Torino is, the to Piemonte region was under the French, so the mentality is very near to the French. If you translate that into design, French design is quite different from German design. French design sure. is uh, uh, art deco, art nouveau, mm -hmm. uh, they add art to uh, industrial product. German design is Bauhaus, uh, Ulm, so they try to be minimalist. Interesting. Then you can add another town that is very important in Italy, that's Modena. And Modena is one of the most important uh, towns for cars and for car guys. Right. And in Modena, they, they, they don't, uh, the body is not important at all. The only thing that is important is the mechanic. So if you go to Modena, they talk about engine and, and right. chassis. Right. And, and the body is something they don't care about it. it in addition to the new, new designs, uh, there are also people just on the other side of this, uh, this, this, this area right this here that, that, are, that are beating paddles. He's beating paddles, still, like, like my <laughs> still grandfather was doing. Yes, yeah, still we have. still have that, keeping that alive. Yeah, because we discovered that after uh, the, the CAD and the, and, the, and the milling machine process, still for some parts of the car, uh, typically the aluminum parts of the car, panel beating is the fastest a way to get the parts. So, and, and Andrea, most importantly, you work the closest with Morella, your wife. <laughs> Talk about this relationship you have in running this business together. Um, I should say that 60% of sports cars today are uh, chosen and driven by women. And this is a big revolution. 60%. 60%. Uh, if the wife uh, or the girlfriend doesn't like the, the sports car, you will never buy it. When we come back, we'll see what makes a God of Design so revolutionary and unforgettable. And then later, we'll go car hopping across the country and around the world. So stick around for more. Car Crazy! Hey, hey, Barry, my ride is so sweet. Hop on over and talk to me. Here we have the Downings. Uh, mind if I join you guys? I don't know. Howard Downing, junior and senior. How are you doing, guys? Good. We're doing, doing fine. Beautiful day today. Howard, uh, you're sitting in this chair for a reason. Yes. I'm sitting in this chair. I was born with cerebral palsy, and uh, 
this is what I used to get around these larger shows here at York. There's quite a bit of area to cover, so I use the scooter to get around. Doesn't slow you down and build any hot rods, though. Oh, not too much, not too much. <laughs> We've been building hot rods together since I was a little kid, and I just started helping him out in the garage right around when I was eight, nine years old, handing him tools and kind of learning from him as much as I could. He was nine years old, and he had to have a major operation, so I threw together an electric golf cart for him to drive up and down the street to see his friends. That actually ended up taking a trophy at the local indoor show, which I thought was fascinating. I think that sort of helped get them a little more interest. We've been building cars now for a good 10 years. What's it done for your relationship, father and son? Oh, we're very close. I mean, as far as fathers and son go, we're, we're very close. I mean, uh, sometimes when we're working on the cars, we're, we're uh, almost more like uh, brothers than father and son. This is the best hobby they can get into for their sons and daughters because the closeness of it, you're building, you're creating something together. It's giving them an education. It's showing a little bit of what you can do as a father, I guess. We worked on this together, but what was nice was he, let, he put me in charge of all the engineering on the car, so the chassis is completely custom, and uh, I had to get out my slide rule, you know, and do all the calculations for the suspension and the brakes and everything else. My parents never put any uh, limitations in front of me. I mean, they never, they never let me use my handicap as an excuse, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. And I never allow it myself to use it as an excuse. I'm sure we have a lot of handicapped people watching right now that have kind of given up a little bit, don't have a lot of hope. What would you, what would you say to them? Don't give up hope. You can do more than, than you think you can. Keep trying, and, and you can accomplish anything yeah. you can put your mind to. It does help to have a dad like Howard over here, huh? Mm -hmm, it sure does. Yeah. Couldn't have done it without him. Yeah. I mean, uh, he's taught me everything I know. Yeah. That's really special. Howard, last word on uh, on uh, what you have going here? Boy, I really don't have a lot of words right now. Some of the stuff he just says got, got me thinking. <laughs> I really don't have a lot. I uh, We don't get sentimental too much, so I guess for hearing him say some of this stuff makes me feel real good. Now did you ever find a cup so fine as mine? Well, it's time to see how car crazy you are. In 1964, Porsche introduced the 911. How much horsepower did it have? 35, 90, 130, 180 horsepower? Well, how about it? Which answer is racing through your mind? We'll find out the answer a little later in the show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more from this world-renowned automotive design firm. It's right here on Car Crazy. Welcome back to Zagato, one of the world's most well-known and revered automotive design firms. We've been talking with Andrea Zagato, the owner of the world-famous uh, design center here in Milan. And uh, we have a special treat for you right now because we're going to get the rest of the story from Andrea's wife, uh, Morella Revolta. Uh, Zagato and the Revolta is an interesting connection because here again you really didn't have a choice you've been a car guy since birth the famous Revolta name I have it in my blood you I guess <laughs> now the Issa Revolta uh, uh, mark was created by your grandfather my grandfather Unbelievable. yes he started out with um, how do you call it mopeds uh -huh. um, motorcycle and mopeds uh -huh. and then the first uh, car project that he did is the famous Tizetta the little egg right. that open in the front. Right. You grow up in this car guy family. Yes. Then you come to the States, you go to school in Colorado. For what reasons, I can't possibly imagine. For skiing. Uh, for skiing. <laughs> <laughs> I love skiing. <laughs> what a surprise. In, in Boulder, Colorado, and you had this wonderful experience. So this is why your English is so very good. I went through high school in Florida. Oh, in high school in Florida? I didn't we know that moved, part. We moved in the United States when I was 10 years old. So I went junior high, really? high school, and college really? in the U.S. Wow. And then um, I really enjoyed it. I liked it. So after college, I moved back to Milano to see, I didn't know if I was American or Italian. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I found out I'm both. Yeah. I will never sure. be sure. totally one and totally the yeah. other. Great appreciation for both. Yeah. So I moved back to Milano after Colorado. This is an interesting story, how you met Andrea. Now we have this common friend, Winston Goodfellow, yes. who is the American expert on all of the things Italian sports car related and uh, is a great photographer and writer or whatever. But you've known Winston. How, how long have you known Winston? 20 yeah. years maybe. Yeah. He's the one who introduced me to Andrea. Yeah, how did that happen? Um, Winston was in Italy. He comes here quite often right. for uh, business. He was in Italy one day 
and we were supposed to go to an appointment together somewhere outside Milano and of course he was late uh, so he called me up <laughs> and he said could you pick me up at Zagato and I said sure and believe it or not I didn't even know who Zagato was really I mean I knew it as trademark you know but um, I didn't know who the family I've never met him and he said you never met Andrea Zagato and I said no and he said you have to meet him because you guys have a lot in common mm. well we ended up getting married, so I guess he was right. Yeah. Well, a lot has happened at Zagato in the last eight years, yes. so you have had some influence here, I think. There's a very um, nice group of people. They really love working together, and it's a good feeling. It took us a lot of work to go from a production company to a service provider, mm -hmm. a styling center, to make our clients, they knew who Zagato was and what they did because they had such a wonderful story, but to tell them that we were selling, to show them that we were good enough to sell a new product, a, a new different type of service, it was another thing. Uh, Andrea mentioned that 60% uh, of the buying decisions for sports cars today is made by women. <laughs> so it's important to get the woman's point of view in yes. all this design. I, I do give him, you know, he always, whenever he, they finish to do a car, they always ask me to look at it and say what I think about it. Uh, usually they make me try the prototype because I'm also terrible. I hate little noises and things. I'm very, I, I like things that are perfect. So whenever I try a prototype, I tell him, sometimes they go nuts. I say, there's a little noise here. And they're like, what noise? And they go around and around, and I said, here. And then they find it, but really? it takes them. Really? The guys don't even hear it. They don't even hear it. <laughs> what is it about operating this business that's so very special for you? You sell a dream to people. When you do an Aston Martin, when you create, for instance, an Aston Martin, which I'm very proud of, you sell a dream. Whoever buys it is he's dreaming about something. So that I think is something that we need more to dream of, mm, you know? Absolutely. So, and, like we go to the movies to dream, to think that life is better when you buy and you ride in a beautiful car, you see things in a more positive <laughs> way. <laughs> Morella Zagato, everybody, who along with her husband, Andrea, are the owners of this wonderful design house of Zagato, which impacts our lives through the expressions of so many of the car manufacturers, again, around the world. A real special time to be with you and Andrea. Thank you Can't very take much. it up yeah. for your time. Folks, uh, we do have to take a break, but we're going to be back with a lot more of McGuire's Car Crazy in just a minute. When we come back, we'll find out how much horsepower the Porsche 911 was introduced with in 1964. So don't go away because it's all right here on Car Crazy. So in 1964, Porsche introduced the 911. How much horsepower did it have? Well, did you pick 130 horsepower? That's right. And according to Mark Perleberg of Nauta Guides, the 911 was developed to replace the beloved 356, the company's first model, which was essentially a highly modified Volkswagen Beetle. The car made its world debut at the Frankfurt Auto Show in 1963 and was now larger, more comfortable, and far more powerful than the car it replaced. Originally, it was named the 901, then later changed to 911 at production time due to protests by French car builder Peugeot on grounds that they had trademark rights to all car names formed by three numbers with a zero in the middle. Mm -hmm. And if you knew this urgent <clears throat> bit of car trivia, <laughs> you must be car crazy. And now, once again, Barry McGuire. One of the reasons I love your letters, your car crazy confessions that you send to our website, carcrazycenter.com, is that it reminds you of how diverse our hobby is, and sometimes it shakes our senses as to what a car guy really is. Listen to what Susan Metzger says. She writes, I just saw my first episode of Car Crazy. At the end of the show, Barry McGuire told a story about a woman who gave her prized Mustang to her son, Jamie, just before she died. Remember that story? It was a great story. He went on to talk about the emotional connection people have with their cars, which is what compelled me to write. In 1993, Lincoln came out with the Mark 8, 
We went to the auto show in Kansas City where they had a pearl white version of the car on display. There were so many people around it that I couldn't get close, but I knew that that was the next car I would have. My husband offered many other new models, but I didn't bite. My brother-in-law was in the automobile business, and in the summer of 1998, we told him we were ready for him to look for a Mark 8. One day in the fall, he finally called and had one for us to look at. At first sight, it appeared to be gold, which didn't appeal to me, but turned out to be a champagne with saddle interior. We test drove it and decided to take it. I told my husband he would have to trade in the Oldsmobile because I couldn't do it, even though I had waited five years for the Lincoln. Come time to pick up the Lincoln, he said, let's go, so I did. Upon arriving at the dealership and the paperwork was beginning, I had to excuse myself because I was trading in the Olds. I went out behind the office and just sobbed. Only a few people know this. About an hour later, we got on the Lincoln and drove it home. Whenever the conversation turns to getting a different car now, I get the same feeling. I still have the car today and it looks better than the day I bought it. I have no plans of getting anything else. Regardless of how ridiculous it seems to become so emotionally attached to a piece of metal, I'm here to say that it happens. Thanks for making it okay to be car crazy. It is so easy for car guys to have a very narrow interpretation of what it is that makes you a car guy. Usually car guys reserve their highest regard for those who most closely mirror their age, lifestyle, and personal taste in cars. It's only natural. That's who they hang out with. But the world of car guys is so much larger than that. I often say that if you love cars, it doesn't matter if you're a guy or a gal, you're a car guy. But you have challenged me to also say if you love cars, it doesn't matter if you go to car shows or read car buff magazines, you're a car guy. The emotional attachment that you have for your car is what every car guy understands and experiences. Indeed, you are crazy about your car and that makes you car crazy. Perhaps not certifiable, but car crazy for sure. And I'm also sure that you speak for millions of other people who don't fit our classic description of a car guy, but share our same passion. Thanks for speaking on their behalf and for making all of us just a little bit more car crazy. Hey, check this out. The SEMA Show, the largest and most prestigious automotive aftermarket trade show in the world, is now open to CarCrazyCentral.com visitors. Car Crazy Central is bringing you all of the excitement and breaking news each day with our eight teams of cameras and journalists covering. Plus, Barry McGuire will be on stage interviewing top celebrities for both CarCrazyCentral.com and SEMA Television. To catch all of the action, check out the SEMA Insider on CarCrazyCentral.com. Car